A mistake students make frequently when following a vehicle that's about to turn, especially into a place where they have to cross a sidewalk, is that they assume the vehicle will always turn at regular speed. But sometimes there might be, for example, a pedestrian that they didn't see, so they'll stop suddenly at the last moment. So make sure that as soon as the vehicle in front indicates that it wants to turn, scan in front of it to see if there are any users and be prepared to slow down or stop if needed. In this case, the driver is turning left and there's a cycling path, so there could be a cyclist that they didn't see. Their vehicle is tall also, so you won't be able to see the cyclist yourself and anticipate the situation. So in these situations, always slow down enough and keep a safe distance in front until they're completely out of your way. If someone in front is hesitating, constantly alternating between braking and accelerating, make sure to keep a safe distance. They're probably looking for an address and they might stop suddenly when they find it. That happens a lot with taxis, delivery vehicles, or any other type of vehicles that are constantly looking for addresses. Another thing taxis tend to do a lot is stop suddenly when somebody hails them. So always be aware of that when following one. If you need to go around a stopped vehicle, leave plenty of room to do so. The distance of a car between you and the car in front more or less. That will make your maneuver easier and you'll be able to see further ahead. If you get too close, you won't see far enough to know when you have enough room to go around it. Remember that you cannot cross a solid line in normal situations, but in this case, the vehicle is stopped there for an undetermined amount of time, so it's an exception. And if you're about to stop behind the delivery truck, or whatever vehicle where there's someone operating behind, make sure that you leave them plenty of room. A frequent reaction with students in this case is that they're worrying about blocking the vehicles behind. We're not the ones who are blocking the street, they are. As long as they're blocking the whole street in front, there's nowhere to go, not for you, not for anybody behind you. So the vehicles behind don't need this room more than you do. The only one that needs this room right now is the forklift operator. That same principle applies in situations where you don't know exactly what people want to do, like here, so I leave enough room until I determine that it's safe to go. When passing him, I check if the reverse lights are lit. If that's the case, there's the risk he didn't see me and starts reversing. Just a little reminder, when reversing, you always go towards the direction where you turn your steering wheel. So since he turned it to the right in this case, judging by the orientation of his front wheels, if he reverses, he'll reverse towards the right, so towards me. So always look out for reverse lights when passing close to active vehicles that are turned away from you. They might not have seen you and reverse towards you. In the last video, I talked about driving in tight streets and something that you have in some places where there are curves and tight streets is mirrors so that you can see the vehicles coming from the opposite direction and they can see you. So look for these when approaching a curve. They can also be placed where there are intersections, like here. And you can also check them for parked vehicles. And by the way, try not to park your car too close to a curve on a tight street. Vehicles coming from behind might see your vehicle at the last second when turning and could hit it. In some places, there will be traffic signs forbidding stopping or parking from a certain point in situations like this, but if there aren't and you can avoid parking there, I highly recommend doing so, especially in the interior of the curve where parked vehicles are less visible to the vehicles coming from behind. In the exterior of the curve, the curve is wider so we can see further away, but in the interior, our view will often be blocked by something, in this case this house here, so someone coming from behind will see the parked car at the last moment. Here in North America, we tend to use the horn a lot to show our impatience to others as opposed to a communication device. But in some places where there are a lot of tight two-way streets, it's used a lot to communicate. So what you can do when approaching a curve is to use your horn. Not too aggressively, of course, just a little push or two to let people on the other side of the curve know you're there. They'll usually respond by honking themselves to confirm they got the message. Then you should slow down and get as close to your right as possible. If you're driving late at night, don't use your horn, flash your high beams instead. The driver on the other side will see it and you won't wake up the neighborhood. But even during the day, in some places, it's forbidden to honk without a valid reason. So check your local laws for that. In the second video of this series, I talked about distances we need to keep from cyclists and other vulnerable users. These are safe distances in case they swerve or something like that. Be especially aware of that when passing next to people with handicaps or people that don't seem to be feeling too well. Let me tell you about one of those freaky things that happened to me once. 
A man was crossing the street with his wife, which was holding him by the arm, and he didn't seem to be feeling too well. So I stopped and waited until they were at a good distance from my car before accelerating. All of a sudden, he fell backwards with his body very straight. He was epileptic and just happened to have a seizure right there while crossing the street. When epileptics have a seizure, sometimes their body becomes very stiff. So he fell back very straight like a post. These are things that happen very rarely, but when they happen, it makes you think. I'll talk about some of those once-in-a-lifetime freaky situations in some of my future videos. So for now, that's it for this series. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more stuff on this topic. The next video will be on something I've been having lots of requests for, parallel parking between cones. So stay tuned and see you soon.